The truth is that once you have a working Arch Linux installation, you never have to install Arch again from the official ISO because you could just clone the whole system. So here I have a backup of my install that was installed on a USB drive and this contains the whole file system and this was created by rsync and so we can just copy this using the rsync command. So here I first create a local copy because I want to make an update to this, uh, to this uh, backup instead of updating it after cloning. So I will use rsync to create a copy with all these uh, parameters like uh, a, capital A, capital X, I, and capital H. And uh, using this rsync command, it will preserve all file permissions and uh, file times and dates, even um, specific permissions, and even hard links and symbolic links. So once we type in our pseudo password, this will create just a, a, a complete copy of this uh, backup on my drive, which I will proceed to update. So once the uh, copying has been finished, we can confirm that this copy exists and we need to do a bind mount to be able to chroot into this uh, backup. So bind mounting will basically mount this directory to itself and after that is done, we can just simply use the arch chroot command to get into this system. And inside this chroot environment, you will be able to just run a pacman-syu and this will update the backup the same way that you would backup your whole system. Once the file system that you want to clone is prepared, you will have to also prepare the drive you want to clone to and in this case I will be cloning it to a USB drive that I will be first partitioning using the cgdisk command. We want to delete everything here so delete the current partition and uh, we will create a new partition which will be i guess default and size will be 6g and so this one we want a windows uh, basic data or something so or 0700 will be the hex code and the name will be shared and then we are going to create a new one for the EFI partition, which in my experience 700 megabytes should be enough for. And this will be, so EF00, uh, partition name will be boot. And then we will create a new one for the remaining part here, which will basically everything else and then I can press enter for the Linux partition and this will be our root underscore USB and uh, which now this is done so let's write the partition and let's type yes to finish this and once the partitions have been written to the disk you can format them so if you want a partition to be accessed by Windows computers you can use the mkfs.exfat command to create an xfat partition our boot partition will be created with the mkfs.fat dash capital F32 command to create a fat32 partition for the EFI partition the boot partition and our main partition for our root will be ext4 in this case and because this is a USB disk I also add the dash o caret has underscore journal parameter because this will increase the lifetime of a USB drive but this shouldn't be used if you are using a hard disk because this makes recovery after uh, like a like a unsuccessful unmount like a un improper unmount more difficult after these partitions have been formatted, you should mount the new root partition at slash mnt and the new boot partition at slash mnt slash boot and don't forget to create the boot directory before mounting. Once the partitions have been mounted into the file system, we can change directory into the directory which contains our updated backup or the things you want to clone and we will be using the rsync command here for the cloning and we'll use all these parameters so the lowercase a is basically a bunch of different options bundled together it will be a recursive copy that preserves symlinks that also preserves permissions and times groups and owners it also preserves special devices 
as they are. The capital A preserves the uh, access control lists, capital X preserves extended attributes of the files, and capital H keeps hard links as hard links, while the lowercase i will basically just tell rsync to output the change summary or the uh, copying summary, so if we want to see the files being copied. And lastly, we give the asterisk because we want to copy all the directories and the slash mnt as the target to copy all these things to our drive. So the next thing after copying the whole system is to change the fs step because, well, we copied the same system to different partitions which will have different UUIDs, so we will have to go and edit slash etc slash fs step to actually contain the new UUIDs. So here I x out so all these x's where your old UUID should be, and this is where you should input your new UUIDs with respective of the root and the boot file system or any other file system that you want auto mounted at boot and you can use the lsvlk-f command to get your new UUIDs for your system. After that you should root back into the system with the arch root command to make sure that the boot loader is working. So here we will be creating the uh, grub.cfg file using the grub-makeconfig command and you have to make sure that you actually mounted the boot um, drive the boot partition to the boot directory here well, before creating this configuration file and before you do the grub uh, install. So you, use, you can use the grub install with the parameters here so we will specify the EFI directory over there for our boot directory and then we use the dash dash removable and dash dash recheck so the grub executable is copied to the proper place where on a removable drive. One more thing that you might want to do in a root environment is regenerating the init CPIOs which I did before uh, trying this out. So this is the USB drive that I cloned my whole system to and I will try to boot my laptop based on this clone system. So if I can just uh, find the proper USB 3 port for this to fit in and come on. So now this is nice. So my laptop is configured to boot by default from the USB drive and there we've got grub. So I'll just need to select the proper boot option here and ArchLinux is booting up. So systemd has been started properly. The file system is supposed to be good. And uh, let's see if we get the login screen and suspenseful look at the monitor and we have a cursor and the login screen. So this seems to have worked for us for the time being. So as you can see, using this method, you can restore an Arch Linux system from a backup or even clone it to a different drive that I just did here. And what else you have to be careful about is that if you are cloning this system and you are going to be using the clone system with the old one in parallel, you might want to change your host's file and your host names. So there will no confusion and there will be no confusion on the network. If you are moving this installation to a different computer, so you are cloning it to be used on another system, you might need to install additional drivers, which you should look up what drivers you might need and install them in a Cheroot environment because that is kind of the most simple way to deal with this kind of issues. Well, if you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see more, you can check out my other videos on this channel and you can subscribe for future content. Give me a like if you really liked what you've seen here and you can find all my social media and other types of links down in the description so you can follow me everywhere and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.